Yeah, okay. Who's with us today? Good to see y'all today. Uh, sorry for the like moving around of the screen, but we have this little microphone over here. I don't know if you can see it. Whoop, it's on a stand. And we read that Facebook says it's, it, your microphone works better if you plug it in after you go live. So if you, <laughs> you saw us moving this thing around trying to plug the jack in, that's what happened. Good to see you, Chris Jones Ferguson. Good to see you. At, hi, Abby Errol. Nice to have you with us this morning. <clears throat> There's my good, good friend, Patch. How are you today, Patch? Nice to see you. Uh, <clears throat> hey there, Eric Fleming. Good to see you, man. I hope you are doing well. Um, there's Keith Nutter. Uh, Gabrielle. How, how you doing at Gabrielle? Um, Gabrielle does, I don't know if you guys know, but Gabrielle does all of our announcement videos and doesn't she do an awesome job? Uh, well, so good to see all of you jumping on bright and early at 7.30 this morning and I hope you all are doing well. And uh, hey, just want to give you a quick uh, couple heads up, but before we do, there's Emily Henning. Hi, Emily. I hope you and Josh and the family are doing well. Good to see you. There's Mark Siebold. Good to see you too, brother. And uh, just, I always say this in the, in the mornings, I love seeing our church family. So sorry if I get caught up in saying hi to everybody. There's Diana Nutter, um, Krista uh, Kessler. That's actually Pastor Andrew's sister. Good to see you this morning. All right. Um, but I love y'all and it's just so nice to see you bright and early this morning. Hey, a couple things I want to run uh, by you real quick before we dive into our, our brief little devotional this morning. And that is uh, we made the final decision um, that we are going in the first week of March, so a month away, we are going to be going to three Sunday morning services. Um, I've been so blessed by the amount of people that have been coming back. We've all been just blessed and surprised, and it's so wonderful to see all of you that are coming back to church. Um, and for those of you that are unable to right now, that's quite fine. Please don't feel any pressure to rush back before you are ready. But we do have a good amount of people that are coming back, which has been really exciting. We've been having some incredible services, by the way. Um, just the anointing of God in our services the last, um, the last couple, few weeks, really since the new year, has just been incredible. I mean, we're just having some wonderful times together uh, with God and worship and the Word. It's just been a wonderful time. So we're going to go to three services starting the first uh, weekend in March. So what we're going to probably do is take that uh, 9 a.m. service and we're going to bump it back to 8.30. And then we're going to take that 9 a.m. service and bump it forward to potentially like um, maybe 9.50, somewhere in that neighborhood. Then the other... The third one will go like or just after 11, like 11.10 or something like that. So we want to try to squeeze them together and keep them in a time of the morning that y'all enjoy coming to church. But, you know, obviously with Corona still, um, you know, it, it, it pretty high. Things are still, still really um, moving. A lot of people are still dealing with it. So we want to keep people safe and we want to continue to spread out and we want to um, create room for more people that want to come back. So um, we're going to go to three Sunday mornings first week in um in march and let me just actually i would like if you would post this morning uh if we go to the three service which we are which one would you go to most because we're going to send a survey out to you this week but i'd like to see you on this morning would you go to the 8 30 are you an early bird would you go to the 9 50 or would you go to the 11 10 do you like to sleep in um I, i'd like to hear from you you can go ahead and, and comment on that here this morning um, also, too, just another quick plug, something we're excited for. You know, these morning devotionals have been wonderful. We've gotten a lot of really good feedback from people. And obviously, we've been continuing to enhance our online ministry. And uh, we're excited about something that's going to start happening online uh, on, um, on Fridays. Uh, Pastor Zach and Andrew, Andrew and some of the guys, um, Brian, uh, Brian Roloff, our media pastor, Brian's really going to be the one leading it. And along with Carter and Zach and our other staff members. But we're going to start something on Fridays at 1230, just like this online, but it's going to be different. They're calling it The Break. And uh, for those of you that take a lunch break between, uh, you know, a 12 and, and 1, they're going to come on every Friday like this, live on Facebook at 1230, your, your lunchtime. 
and they're going to have some fun. It's going to be a completely different vibe. It's going to be a little bit like maybe like a talk show kind of thing. And they're going to be talking about what's happening in the church. You're going to get to know our team better. We'll have a little fun, some laughter. Um, but we encourage y'all to uh, jump on on Fridays if you're available at 1230. That's going to start uh, in about a week. So they'll let you know all the details on that. But um, we are, as you know, we are f- wrapping up our 21 days of prayer and fasting. Uh, that will end this particular uh, Sunday on the 31st. It will be our last day of prayer and fasting. And uh, I don't know about you, but praying and fasting is always such a powerful time. Uh, I've told you before, every time I come out of a season of prayer and fasting, I always feel closer to the Lord. And it's like you always see God doing things. In fact, we had an incredible prayer force uh, meeting last week, and we've been praying and fasting. And I really believe some of the fruit that we're seeing on our weekend services right now are due to people praying and fasting and and seeking after God. I don't know about you, but I'm just excited for this year. I'm glad 2020 is over, and I just have a lot of excitement about what God's going to do this year, and so I hope that you're expectant for your own life and, um, you know, what you're believing God to do in your life and your family this year, because I'm believing God for some some great things. And that being said, we've been talking about prayer the last few weeks. I I talked to, uh, the first week I talked to you about the, the power of praying and fasting, and when you add fasting to your prayer time, what that does. Um, Last week, we talked about praying together. We talked about joining forces. Uh, What Jesus said, you know, if two or three of you will agree is touching anything, that your Father in heaven will do it. And so there's great power and unity and coming together and praying together. Uh, Well, today what I want to do is I want to wrap up our little mini series on this. And I want to talk to you going back to Jesus' words. In fact, let me ask you a question. How many of you are enjoying our series on hashtag Jesus. Um, I'll tell you what, I have been just thoroughly enjoying sharing those messages with you, studying that week in and week out. It's been so powerful. And I just love the ministry of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, and it's just been powerful and uh, and, and inspiring. So we're going to go to Jesus' words this morning uh, in Matthew chapter 7. So if you have your Bible with you, you can open it up to Matthew 7. If you have your um, Maybe your Bible app, you can open up your Bible app, but I'm going to go ahead and read um, in Matthew 7, verses 7 through 11. I love this section of scripture. It says, ask and it will be given to you. So this is Jesus inspiring you and I to pray. He said, ask and it will be given to you and you will uh, seek and you will find knock and the door will be opened for everyone who asks receives and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be open. And what man is there among you if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? And I like that. There's an exclamation point there. I mean, Jesus, as he's speaking to the disciples at that time, this is part of the great sermon on the Mount. As he's talking to you and I, there's like a fervency about it. He's like, you know, ask and it will be given. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. And then he kind of goes on to say, you know, you being parents, you know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more does your heavenly father want to give to those that love him? And it's just a, a powerful, uh, you know, thought there. And and really, let me just give you three quick things this morning on this scripture and hopefully just encourage you and inspire you. And the first one is this, that prayer, as you read this, Jesus sharing this with us, you can see it as as like an invitation. It's like answering God's invitation to come and talk with him and to share what's going on in your life. You can read this in so many scriptures throughout the Bible, especially in the New Testament. And you can see prayer is just this invitation, like God is saying, come. I know you have challenges. I know you got things in your life you don't know what to do about. I know there's some things that you're trying to make decisions about. I know you have mountains in your life and fears in your life and worries in your life. And it's just like you hear these amazing words of Jesus. And he's just saying, come, come, take your burdens, take your worries, take your fears. In fact, I love what Paul said in the New Testament. He says, don't be anxious about anything. But take all your needs to God, all your fears to God, all your worries to God. Think about that because he is our loving father and he cares for us. God loves us and he's looking out for us. And so you you know, I need to see prayer as like this great invitation to just come and 
and just lay our hearts out before God. In fact, I like what the Bible says. It says, ask and you'll be given. Seek and you'll find. Knock and the door will be open to you. And obviously, anytime you see repetition in scripture, it's, it's like God putting an emphasis on it. So ask, seek, knock. When, when Jesus is saying that, he's like emphatic about it. He's like, I mean this. Like, you really need to do this. This is really important for your life and your relationship with God and what God wants to do in your life and your family. Like, this is really important. Like, I really want you to do this. And then the other thing I like about that, this invitation, is I like how he uses the word everyone. Uh, how many of you know God has no favorites, right? You know, sometimes it's easy to look in the world and it almost seems like, does God love that person more than me? It seems like God's always answering prayers or doing something for somebody. But here's the good news. It's qualified for everyone. I love that. God has no favorites. You as parents know the importance of that. You know, we have no favorites with our kids. God has no favorites. He loves us all the same. And he has this beautiful invitation to you and I to come and and lay out our worries, lay out our fears, lay out our concerns, lay out our confusion, because he's right there listening. You know, one of the ways I was thinking about this great invitation is when you and I don't pray, when we're just too busy or we just don't feel like taking the time to pray, to pray. It's like, it's like turning down this incredible invitation from God to come and lay all your worries and fears and burdens on the Lord. In fact, I love what the great Martin Luther said about this scripture. He said, uh, God knows that we are timid and shy, that we feel unworthy and unfit to present our needs to God. We think that God is so great and we are so tiny that we do not dare to pray. That is why Christ wants to lure us away from such timid thoughts. Isn't that a cool thought? He wants to lure you and I away from such timid thoughts and to remove our doubts and to have us go ahead confidently and boldly ask of God. And so that's the thought today. This great invitation that Christ gives us to come and pray, not timid, not feeling undeserving, not feeling like, you know, God's too busy for us, but coming boldly and confidently. I love what the Bible says in Hebrews, you know, let us come boldly before the throne of grace. Uh, we don't have to be shy. We can come boldly before God. So that's the first thing you need to see prayer as this great invitation and not praying is like turning down that invitation. Secondly, um, our, our confidence in prayer really begins with understanding the love and goodness of our heavenly father. Look what the Bible says here in verses 9 through 11. It says, Or what man is there among you? If his son asks for bread, we'll give him a stone. Or if he asks for a fish, we'll give him a serpent. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those that ask him? <clears throat> I can tell you what. How many of you know God is a good father? Uh, he is, I love that song, he's a good, good father. You know, Christy and I, yeah, they, our kids come up constantly in my, <clears throat> my sermons and my talks with you. Uh, you know, it's funny because we had kids a little bit later in life. And I'd actually, if I could just be frank with you, I actually, I came to a point in my life where I could kind of take it or leave it. You know, it'd been so long and our lives were moving forward. But I want to tell you what, <clears throat> having kids has been one of the greatest gifts of my life. And, you know, my, my kids are four and six. And, and what I love, my favorite part of the day is when I come home from work and, you know, five, five thirties, depending on the day. And I walk through the garage door into our living room. As soon as my kids hear that door open, they just start screaming, daddy, 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 daddy. And I hear them and they come running down the stairs and they just jump and they give me these huge bear hugs. It's like, daddy, daddy, daddy. And of course, Harley, my dog, comes too. He's just as excited or more excited. I, I have like this welcoming committee when I come home from work. And it is the most awesome thing. I mean, when my kids jump into my arms and they're like, daddy, daddy, daddy. Can I tell you what? It's like, all right, whatever. You, what do you want? Anything you want. <laughs> like, whatever you want. I'll give it to you right now. And, you know, I, I think about that because those of you that are parents or grandparents, you know the amazing love you have for your kids. Like, there's nothing you wouldn't do to help your kids. And, you know, we have to see prayer that way. We have to see the Father that way. You know, how you view God really has a lot to do with our faith and trusting and believing God to come through for us. Let me ask you a question this morning. What is your view of God? You know, sometimes people see him as this grumpy God in heaven, this, you know, this crouching tiger. He's ready to pounce on you as soon as you do something wrong. Other people see God as like this flaky father who's moody and he 
he changes his mind about things or he's this dictator that you can just never, you know, never make happy. Um, you know, some people see him as Santa Claus, you know, making a list, but he's checking it twice to see if you're naughty or nice, you know, whether he's going to answer your prayer. You know, and a lot of people, they have father wounds just from their own fathers, earthly fathers. They have a difficult time seeing God as this loving heavenly father. I love what A.W. Tozer said, one of the most powerful quotes I ever heard. He said, what comes to your mind when you think about God is the most important thing about you. Wouldn't you agree with that? Like when you think about your heavenly father, what first comes to your mind is so important for you and I. You need to see God today. Let me, let me just encourage you. You need to look to God today as your heavenly father. Like he loves you the way you love your kids and your grandkids. I want to tell you what, man, he loves you that way. God is not against you. God is for you. He gives you this incredible invitation to come and pour your worries, your thoughts, your concerns before him. And then lastly, I'll close out with this. Number three is that intimacy with God, answered prayer and breakthroughs come through consistent disciplined prayer. Notice what he says here. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open. For everyone who asks receives. And the one who seeks finds. And the one who knocks the, the door will be opened. So the idea here is this ask, seek, knock is an increased intensity. All right. So you're asking and then you're seeking and then you're knocking. It's like there's this increased intensity. You lay the need out there, then you come back and you seek a little more, then you come back and you knock. It's like not giving up. There's an intensity about it. Laying your fears, laying your worries, laying your needs before God, laying your desires before God. And then also <clears throat> the whole idea of asking, seeking, and knocking. If you were to read that in the original language, it would say, it would say this. It would say, ask and keep on asking. Seek and keep on seeking. Knock and keep on knocking. And so the idea here is there's an increased intensity, but then there is this, this, ask, this asking and continuation of asking and knocking and seeking. And it's like, it's like there's this persistence about it. And I want to tell you what, you know, I think there is a lot to say about that. As a matter of fact, um, you know, when you look in life, oftentimes the difference between successful and unsuccessful people is that successful people develop disciplines that unsuccessful people just simply won't. I mean, for example, uh, look at the Super Bowl uh, this year. Tom Brady is back again. I don't know, but I can hardly believe that, but he is back again this year. In fact, it was kind of funny. They said when uh, Tom Brady, because you look at the two quarterbacks, when Tom Brady won his first championship, Patrick Mahomes, who's Man, that, that kid is amazing. It, he was like a, he was in kindergarten and that's hilarious. But what made Tom Brady so successful is yes, he has talent and ability, but he's an extremely disciplined guy. He pays the price. And I want to tell you what, if you pray and you keep on seeking God, what does the Bible say? That God is the rewarder of those that diligently seek him. So if you've been praying for something for a long time and the answer just hasn't come, God hasn't given you that breakthrough yet, uh, but you've been praying and you've been asking God to direct you, but you just don't feel that direction yet. Can I encourage you today? Ask and keep on asking. Knock and keep on knocking. In fact, I love in the Bible where Jacob in the, in the book of Genesis wrestled with that angel. He said, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. You know, I think that's the heart of prayer. It's knowing that God gives us this unbelievable invitation to come and lay our needs and requests before him and to do it boldly because we know he's our heavenly father and he loves us. And when we do it, don't give up. Pray and keep on praying. Ask and keep on asking. Knock and keep on knocking because your heavenly father who loves you more than you'll ever know will eventually come through for you. Amen? That's good stuff this morning. Hey, let me, let me bless you before you start your day today. Father, we, we just come before you today, and we thank you, Lord, for this just amazing time we have to come together. And most importantly, God, we thank you for your word today, that you've given us as, as your children a wonderful, beautiful invitation to pray. And I pray that each and every one of us would accept that invitation that, Lord, we would seek after you with all of our hearts, that we would not give up knowing that you are our good, good Father. And if we want to bless our children, how much more do you want to bless us? I pray for that person or those people watching today that have been praying and they haven't been seeing the answers yet. I pray that they would be encouraged to keep on asking, to keep on seeking, to keep on knocking, because you are a good Father and you will answer in Jesus' name. And amen. 
Well, hey, I love you guys so much and uh, good to be with you again. Uh, we hope to see you this weekend in uh, one of our two uh, weekend services, either 9 or 1045. Again, be thinking about that third service coming up. For those of you that will be watching online, we uh, look forward to seeing you as well. I love you. Have a blessed day.